Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Drag Show. I'm Stu Smith, your host, and with me tonight are Lee Crow and Flynn DeMarco, two of the outstanding cast members. I call them stars but, uh, <laughs> of the you, incredible Thank Vice you. Palace, currently uh, being done by the Thrill Peddlers at the Hypnodrome Theater at Tenth and Division. I believe that's the address, but uh, it's five yes. seven five tenth. But yes. that's close enough. Uh, great show. Great oh, show, you. great Thanks talent, uh, <laughs> thrill peddlers. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are part of that. We're really, really proud of this show. We're having yeah. a, a wonderful time. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about your roles in this, and then we'll talk a little bit about your, your backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just a little bit of background about the show, which I'm sure we'll get into, but uh, uh, it was originally uh, produced here in San Francisco in 1972. Uh, part of the, the Coquettes, and also uh, Mink Stoll and Divine, John Waters, uh, you know, beloved actors were both in the show, and I'm lucky enough to uh, be playing the role that Divine played, the role of Divina. Mm -hmm. so. and, and you do it great. Thank you. And Flynn? <laughs> um, I play uh, Goldoni, who's the uh, Divina's chef at her glamorous at villa. Villa? Yes. And, uh, it's typecasting. Yeah. <laughs> It's true, actually. But oh, yeah, so, um, and I get to, I just, I, the love interest, I guess, for part of the show. So, so what brought you guys to Thrill Peddlers? Well, I had initially uh, got brought in to take over parts in Pearls Over Shanghai, which wrote, which uh, ran for almost two years. So there were over, I don't know, when they counted at the end, something like 60 people had been in the show by the end, right. or something like that. <laughs> and uh, one of our castmates, L. Ron Hubby, uh, uh, when one of these parts came up, it was the gangster part, and it had only ever been played by men. And um, my a uh, lot of my performance history in town has been being a drag king. And so she uh, approached the director and said, I'd like to ask this person to, uh, to, and see if she's interested in taking over this role. And when I came to see the show, it was, uh, was so much fun. I Was that Chang? Yes. All right. So I think gangster, I saw you in that, too. It, it, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I think Thrill Peddlers is so amazing. I saw... Pearls, I think, 13 times. Yeah. Wow. Right. And uh, so far, two and a half for uh, <laughs> Vice Palace. Yeah. And counting. Yeah. Counting. Uh, <laughs> so, so you did Chang with them, and you did uh, two roles or one at per in Pearls. I did t well. I did one mainly, Captain uh, Eddie. That okay. was uh, where I ca how I came into it. Like after Lee was in the show, I was like, "Well, I got to get on on that." So, <laughs> and, and, well, it's uh, a perfect match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Captain Eddie, and then I I played uh, Woo Woo, the guy that came out of the coffin, like twice. That's it's just right. a as a jump in at the last minute, but yeah, it was uh, mostly just Captain Eddie. It was a blast. I and really loved both it. both these productions by Thrill Peddlers are Cockettes originals. Right. I yeah. And Vice Palace is the last thing I think that the Cockettes did. Right? And uh, apparently they had actually been broken up uh, prior yeah. to this and needed a, uh, a Halloween review. Right. And, uh, and brought in, uh, as I said, as I mentioned before, Mink Stolen Divine you know, to be in this particular show. And Scrumbly was involved, wasn't he? Maybe in the writing of it or the music. Or uh, yes, he uh, composed all, all composed all the music for all three of these uh, these revivals that the Thrill Peddlers have done, which is uh, Pearls Over Shanghai, Vice Palace, and um, Hot Greeks was the one that we didn't. That's mention. right. That's right. right yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, for for this particular version of Vice Palace, obviously it's a, a lot different than the original version. And Scrumbly has written a number of new songs that he did. Uh, lyrics and uh and music for uh, as well and then uh the sc original script was written by martin warman um, who also did some of the lyric writing and you know uh, for some of the songs yeah and i think he also was involved with pearls too in the yes. original mm -hmm. yeah. it's amazing i mean you've got this i was thinking about earlier what would you title something the from from the cockettes pearls to the thrill peddlers pearls and on you know i it, there's a there's a there's a coffee table book and there that Jose can do the photographs of it. Well, actually, there is a coffee table book. Two coffee table books. Um, uh, David Wilson, who's a very uh, talented photographer who yep. does a lot of the stuff there, um, he's actually working on two books 
uh, that are going to be presented at an, at an art gallery showing about the Cockettes, I think, in um, Colorado. It's the Denver right? Art Museum. Denver Art Museum, yeah. yes. And he's producing two coffee table books, one of all photos of, of the original Cockettes shows, and then the other book, all photos of the Thrill Peddlers revival of yeah. the shows. So, yeah, there's a, absolutely a coffee That's table great. book there. <laughs> Dying to see those. Yeah, uh, yeah those are, uh, we're all real excited to, to check <laughs> that out. You, there's been a lot of good press about everything that, that you guys have been in with them. Well, not Hot Greeks, but uh, Pearls and Vice Palace. Mm. So, oh my God, you're going to have, bo you know, Foot lockers, full of prints <laughs> and uh, press stuff, you know. Uh, yes, well, I hope so. So, good. Russell is the director, and uh, did, does he do the casting also? Or is it a joint thing where everybody collaborates? Or? Well, um, uh, Russell Blackwood, he, uh, you mentioned the director who's the sort of like, you know, thrill peddler king. <laughs> he, <laughs> he is it. Um, you know, I think without his drive and, you know, his just himself the it, thrill peddlers wouldn't be what it is um so yeah he do, he worked on the casting as well as myself as uh, associate director and scrumbly as well so we uh, had auditions and you know and went through and it was a you know it was a process uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah the casting was a a fun and, and really interesting process it's kind of like more than a um a standard cast of anything I've ever seen before. You know, it's like, it's kind of like uh, in my in my mind, I'm seeing it as like Second City in its infancy, or SNL <laughs> in its infancy, where the cast was on some and then just was able to do almost anything they wanted. You know, and no, I don't mean that in a crazy way. <laughs> some of I mean, us do do anything. <laughs> <we're watching. laughs> all right, all right. What's the weirdest thing that you've seen in your association with Thrill Peddlers? Oh my goodness, the weirdest thing. <laughs> on or off yeah, stage? Right. Either. No, Either. I think mean, it's, it's the back, it's the backstage antics that really are the weirdest. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And no, only... there's just such such an amazing amalgam of different kind of characters and performers. Where you've got people who've this is their first play, but I mean, in this show we've got you know go go boys and rock musicians and burlesque performers and drag queens and. Uh, you know, just uh, people from all different uh, performance backgrounds, and I think that's one of the things that makes these shows so interesting is that you're not seeing uh, a bunch of trained actors who are who are trained to do it, you know, one way. And uh, what's great about working with Russell is he really is about um, having input from the cast and really coming up with the best idea in the room. Uh, and so you do get you do get a lot of creative input, and I think it makes for just a really a bigger, more nuanced show. Well, yeah, it seems to really work well, you know. And, <laughs> and there's a lot of, as you said, uh, 60 people, all told, were in Pearls. Yeah, and in this cast, I believe, is, is 18. 18. Yeah, because I counted 18 the yeah. first time I went. And, uh, right, yeah. 18 in the cast, and then we have, uh, you know, our two crew members, Nicholas and Drew, our stage manager and our lighting person. But, I mean, so. as far as uh, the rest of the crew, I mean, they're, you know, the cast does the door oh, and the, the bar. bar and right. the, yeah, so <laughs> it's also that's another great thing about the show is that you are you know you are able to if you're interested in uh, costumes or you know uh, you can do it like you know Flynn wears many hats <laughs> two in the show but no I mean you know he, he did did the flyer the wigs you know it, associate directing and there are a lot of people who do many things and uh -huh. it just makes you really feel uh, you know a sense of of real ownership about the show you're not just a, a actor who's a cog you know in the show you really feel as if you're a part of the creative process which i think shows on stage too you're really you know you you're really invested so if this runs for two years <laughs> <laughs> how long then you, i how will long be dead at the, end of the, show now. <laughs> the, the, the thing about pearls and what made it uh things that are different about this show that made it able to run for so long it is that um it is kind of modular. You could sort of drop in the character, the way it was written, you could sort of drop in uh, actors with just, uh, just a couple of rehearsals. And I don't know that this one, the, the actors are actually required to do <coughs> more things from start to finish. So it'll be a much yeah, more difficult process that, yeah. and arduous process to uh, find replacement people. So I, I, as much as I, as much as I love the show and doing the show, I don't think it will be a, uh, as certainly as long running as pearls, just by virtue of uh, the time and rehearsal commitment to to get people up to speed. And okay. right. and how about you? 
uh, now, is that what's, what was the question? Would you mind repeating the question? Well, let's I'll rephrase it. Okay. Uh, yeah. How long would you be able to stay with oh, this particular gosh. vehicle or something else that were to come up? And, and this applies to you too, Lee. If, if Russell came up with something else exciting. And oh, well, sure. I mean, I'd pretty much say I'm in for the long haul at this point. Right, so. but, but they're already starting to work, uh, pre-work, um, <laughs> the yearly Shocktoberfest yeah. that, uh, yeah. that that what Thrill Peddlers was initially about before they started um, reviving these uh, Coquettes musicals. Right. And so those are the, the shock... Tell them a little bit about Shocktoberfest. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, you were in, in at least I one. was in last year's. Yeah, and, um, so fun. I, uh, we're already looking at scripts for this year's show. I know we had barely gotten this show on stage <laughs> when Russ, you know, mailed me some, emailed me some scripts to look at. So... Um, but yes, it's their yearly one. I believe this will be the 11th. I know it's been going yes, on a long um, time. This 11th or 12th, I want to say, uh, Shocktoberfest. Um, and every year there was a, um, a very popular theater at the turn of the century. Um, this is, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, and in um, in 1920s and into the 60s even, uh, the, the Grand Guignol Theater uh, in Paris where they did these horror plays and, you know, they they did acts of violence on stage, you know, live for everyone. I mean, faked, obviously, yeah. but, um, you know, like <laughs> eyes getting gouged out, um, hot irons to the face, limbs cut off. I mean, you just, anything you can possibly imagine. Um, so... Uh, what Thrill Peddlers has done is taken uh, some of these scripts and revamped them um, or uh, and, and redone them uh, many times, sort of reviving these old uh, 1910, 1920 shows that are really, really interesting and uh, fun to watch. And, and, and usually you will get uh, it's about three to four short plays within one uh, one evening's one entertainment. Evening. So, I think I saw you last year in October. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're so we much do. fun to watch. And it's so much fun to see all this great stage trickery that you know is is happening without the aid of any digitalness. <laughs> it's like it's all real. Well, I've always, when you do that kind of the ghosts floating around. Yeah. It, the spook shows. Are, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really popular I see so many people component. almost pee in their pants oh yeah <laughs> no, the audience, get actually you know? scared it's great it's so much fun it yes. is my mother said she had to look away yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well let's take a look I think we've got a couple of clips from uh, Vice Palace that sure. you're both in and uh, you guys can describe what's going on well, this is our this is our big production number, and it's called It's Davina. That's me and the Liza Wig there, and Flynn in the chef's coat, and uh, they're basically uh, singing my praises so that I <laughs> that I will stop freaking out. It's your favorite part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of our big production numbers with pretty much uh, everybody in the cast. In this number. Uh, it's a uh, that one's a lot of fun. It, I, what I really uh, enjoy about that number is watching the audience because uh, it's such a big yeah. yeah. Um, now this number is uh, Midnight in Manhattan, which is uh, amazingly beautiful. Uh, you know, 1940s style song that Scrumbly wrote and uh, sings in the show. Zelda Kopsanowski uh, in the middle there, uh, Bonnie Suval on the left, and uh, uh, T.J. Buswell on the right, and they do a, a great job. It's uh, I think it, it really does bring the house down every night. Yeah, no, it's amazing. You know, there's so much going on. The costuming is beautiful. I mean, everything is just, it's vibrant. It's really alive. Um, and, and, you know, and I know it can't be exactly the same. Night to night. I mean, there's kind of, oh, no. which is kind of interesting. If you're a real, you go to enough of these shows, you know, and then you pick up little things that maybe cast members have decided would be a little more fun or a little more relevant or a little more whatever. Sure. And uh, it has a life, you know, beyond what's on paper. Yeah. I love that. Well, I in, and in talking about, you know, really being able to be creative during the show, and I think Russ isn't um, afraid to still work on stuff after the show is open and people have seen it. We're still working on what, you know, what can make it better? How can we tighten this up? How can we get a laugh here? How can we, you know, and I think that's also, uh, you know, that's just a really fun way to work, too, because it's not like once you open, okay, that's set, you know. Here we can still, we can still try and make this, you know, more. He's, a, he's an amazing guy. I mean, every time I've talked to him, 
He's he's got so much energy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he un, does. Unbelievable. He's you know? tireless. <laughs> I know. Yeah, absolutely tireless. I mean, you know, he does all the, you know, the the thrill peddler stuff there at the theater. Takes care of the theater. Runs everything. Plus, he does uh, these creep show camps uh, that, during the summer for kids. Yeah. Um, and they have kids come in and they do a. Uh, you know, a two-week session where they learn how to do monster makeup and they put on a show and it's, a, you know, how to do fake blood effects and, you know, man, I wish there had been something I like know. that when I was a kid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it would have yeah. been really, really amazing. Yeah, well, I wish there had been somebody to tell me what it was like to be gay. <laughs> right, well, there's that too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, great point. I mean, these kids are learning. I mean, I went to one of uh, Kate... Kegel Kate's makeup yes. things, you know, and well, then she yeah. made me up live on this show. Oh, right? that's great! Yeah. Well, Kegel Cater is the um, is the makeup coordinator for this show, and and we do do some really great, very uh, exaggerated '60s uh, yeah. uh, '60s looks, which has been a lot of fun. And I love cosmetics, and so it's been really fun. And the costuming, yeah. I mean, it's really lavish. It's really Broadway quality, you know, <laughs> makeup and clothing. Thank you. you yeah, know, thank and you acting, much. I think, you know, and the musical numbers are incredible. Well, we have a really, really strong cast of singers, too, which is great. And I know that uh, that was really important to Scrimbly. And he's really done some uh, some great arrangements with the uh, voices that we've got. So that's been that's been really nice. Well, you know, one, I think one of the things about Pearls was it had such an incredible visual impact. Like yeah, it, was, exactly. you know, it was like this pageant. And it was all, um, you know, like so many colors and things to look at. And when we went into doing... Vice Palace, the idea was brought up that they wanted to do the, all of these all black and white costumes. And I remember for a little while it was like, okay, well, how are we going to pull off black and white costumes and still be able to pull off uh, this sort of tight look um, that's going to be on a par with pearls, but not, you know, not be able to include not all the colors. Copy. And I think that um, between uh, the costumes and the makeup and the hair and, and, the, and, and everything, um, it's just such a, uh, it came, I think it came. All came together really nicely and has such a cohesive look. Well, it did, look. but you're talking also, you have a, maybe not a more sophisticated, but you got a, a cast that has more depth than singing and dancing, it looked like to me. With this. It was also a longer rehearsal process, uh -huh. and again, like what we're talking about, the difference is that there were, you, you know, probably with as many times as you saw Pearls, you saw some people <laughs> on their first night Absolutely. in the show, and there was no yeah. run through in front of an audience. If you were coming in to take over a part, you got one rehearsal with the, with that actor, walk you through it, and then you're on, <laughs> and you just you go. But that was the beauty of that show, uh, and, and I think. And and this is, this is very different. You you would not be able to do that. Yeah. Well, so, so let's. Where is it playing? So is it playing at the Hypnodrome, which is five seven five Tenth Street at Division. Uh, okay. Fridays and Saturdays at eight. Okay. Sundays at seven. seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can get tickets on BrownPaperTickets.com. Correct. Um, and well, the only weekend we aren't running is Fourth of July weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we'll be there until uh, the end of July. Through July thirty first. And For I think, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's geez, that's really get coming up on us, isn't it? Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, three performances a week, mm -hmm. and uh, how many are in the cast? You said eighteen. Eighteen, 18 people yeah. in the cast. So wow. something for everyone. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, I, I know really that. Is. I promise <laughs> you that that is true. Uh, in fact, I think anything Thrill Peddlers does is probably going to be something for almost everybody. You know, it's just. The range, you know. I mean, just the vibrancy alone is going to captivate us. Well, anyway, we've got time to ask you each some questions about your, what, where you've been before you got here. Okay. Let's start with Lee. Well, um, I've lived in San Francisco a little, little over 20 years-ish, and um, I practically the minute I got here, I started um, performing as a drag king, as Elvis or Selvis, and uh, started out lip-syncing and worked that into... 10 or 15 years of really uh, performing at every kind of benefit and drag show and student film and uh, and toured nationally twice. The band went to Australia and that gave me the uh, that gave me the chance to do all kinds of other different stuff, all kinds of impersonations, all kinds of uh, different musical uh, being in bands, uh, doing a lounge act with Scrumbly. Um, wow. All kinds of stuff like that. So uh, I've sort of built my performing career here in San Francisco over the last about 20 years. Now, do you still do drag like in Drag King? Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Interestingly, both of you were recommended to, to me on the show 
not too long ago by uh, Jose Guzman Colon. Oh yeah, uh, yeah he, who he thinks so highly of each of you. And well, he's he said, he's extremely have talented. Have not a, you know not only as a uh, performer but an amazing photographer. Oh, yeah, it's His book Glam Gender, Glam Gender is, is yeah, it's yes. marvelous. The marvelous top of my <laughs> yes. coffee table books. He's, no, it's I marvelous. Love that thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he loves you guys both of you. Well, he loves a well, lot of people. Well, we've and yeah, and, and I mean we we're contemporaries in that we started and have done you know over our careers have overlapped for many years and in many different uh, situations and shows and such so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> well how about you Flynn oh well I um, to have uh, well I moved to San Francisco about 20 years ago and uh, started doing some work with sick and twisted players with Tony vaguely and um, his crew over at Club Institute and um, and there I met Lee and we actually did a lot of performances mm -hmm. together uh, a long time ago. So we've been mm -hmm. performing together for a very long time, <laughs> um, and I did a bunch of stuff at Theater Rhino and um, you know some different theaters around town. And then around 2000, I got the bug to go elsewhere, and I ended up in New Orleans. Um, and uh, with the help of a friend, Richard Reed, started my own theater company called Running with Scissors, um, and performed there for a very long time, um, and did a. Uh, uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch um, as Hedwig, which was really a life-changing sort of experience. Um, and uh, directed shows and acted in them there. And then uh, after Hurricane Katrina ended up back in San Francisco, um, directed a uh, stage version of The Bride of Frankenstein, because I'm a big horror buff, <laughs> which <laughs> is fun. And then ended up now with Thrill Peddlers. So that's it's sort of a, a long line. And, and you know, the, the fun of being back in the show with Lee again after... You know, after such a long time. That's been great. Really great. That's really great. Do you still do, uh, you know, other kinds of performance? I do. I actually, I play the ukulele, and Lee and I play and so together. Do I. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have a little ukulele duo, and we do some... Called like, Flea. Called Flea, that we do some stuff around town. <laughs> How do people learn about what you guys are doing? Do you have websites? Just ask, yeah. <laughs> yeah ask Facebook. Well, I mean, that's all. Oh, your Facebook. So, there. how would somebody find you on Facebook to learn what you're doing? Sure. Well, I'm Lee Crow at Facebook. It's L E I G H C R O W. Okay. Friend me. All right. <laughs> and I, I'm uh, Flynn DeMarco on, on Facebook. And also the Thrill Peddlers. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, see what they're up to. So, Thrill Peddlers, mm -hmm. they have a website. And I think there's yes, uh, press material uh, on the whole play yeah you know, indeed and the cast and everything photos and uh, and press releases and, and more and more history more stuff about the coquettes yeah. too and there's a wonderful documentary if this interests you at all and you haven't seen it that you should see uh, coquettes the documentary wonderful uh wonderful film and i can't David remember Weissman. thank you yes yes oh my god come see the we're show we're out of time <laughs> oh okay goodness <laughs> it was great talking to oh, you yeah, guys thank you, thank thank you, you so, so much. much for yes. coming thank you so much and i'll see you again at the show all righty thank Thanks. you good night folks it goes so damn fast. I can't believe it. Thank you, Sue. That was thank great. Thank you. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Do you want me to give you a clue, like maybe a minute before That's, or something? Yeah, if you can. You know, okay. I get so engrossed. I don't have okay. to. Okay. Just if you could finalize it, then uh -huh. we'll push off. Awesome. Thank you. Great.